on world news tonight. COVID comeback. Indian officials urge distressed Kerala residents to keep calm amidst the surge in a new COVID variant. Storm fury. Severe storm strikes coastal city in Argentina, killing scores and wounding dozens. Landmark trial. Jailed Hong Kong pro-democracy media tycoon Jimmy Lai faces his biggest trial yet. And the year-end spirit. The Seoul Winter 2023 festival kicks off, marking the illumination of the Seoul light. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We begin this week's broadcast with alarming COVID updates from India. India's Kerala state has asked people to stay cautious but urged them not to panic after an increase in COVID cases. The southern state has witnessed the increase after the detection of JN1, a sub-variant of COVID-19. It has been previously found in several countries including the US and China. The World Health Organization says all approved COVID-19 vaccines will continue to provide protection against JN1. State Health Minister Veena George said that there was no need to worry and the situation was under control. She further added that the variant already existed in other parts of the country. Officials said that the JN1 sub-variant was found in Kerala earlier this month in a positive RT-PCR test sample. It was detected as part of the ongoing routine surveillance by INSACOG, a network of laboratories that had been monitoring COVID-19 in India. Kerala's neighbouring states Karnataka and Tamil Nadu also said that they were keeping a close watch on the rising cases in the state. Meanwhile, India's Federal Health Ministry has been running mock drills in hospitals in several states to check their preparedness to handle a sudden rise in COVID numbers. But officials have not attributed the drills to the JN1 sub-variant. The Israeli military said that it discovered a large tunnel shaft in Gaza near what was once a busy crossing into Israel. It added that the tunnel facilitated the transit of vehicles, militants and supplies in preparation for the October 7th attacks. The Israeli Defense Forces said Sunday that it had discovered a major tunnel shaft close to what was once a busy crossing from Gaza to Israel. The entry to the tunnel is also located a few hundred meters from the heavily fortified Ares crossing and a nearby Israeli military base. The military noted that the tunnel stretched more than four kilometers and connected with a sprawling tunnel network across Gaza. It also added that the tunnel was used to move vehicles, militants and supplies in preparation for the October 7th attacks. Israel's chief military spokesperson Daniel Hagari told reporters that troops had discovered at least two other city-sized tunnels. Meanwhile, two Egyptian security sources said Sunday that both Israel and Hamas are open to holding renewed talks on a ceasefire and the release of hostages. However, disagreements remain over implementation. Hamas is demanding that it sets the list of hostages to be released without outside influence while calling for Israeli forces to withdraw behind predetermined lines. While Israel agreed that Hamas can determine the hostages to be released, it's also demanding a timeline and to see the list before setting the time and duration of the ceasefire while refusing any withdrawal. With U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin set to visit Israel on Monday, Washington is pressuring Israel to stop large-scale airstrikes that have caused civilian casualties and switch to low-intensity military operations that precisely target Hamas. Citing a senior Pentagon official, Austin plans to press Israel on what goals it needs to reach to transition its military operations to the next stage and to what extent it has judged that those goals have been achieved. It is unclear whether Israel will accept the U.S. request to scale back its military operations. Meanwhile, Pope Francis on Sunday condemned the killing of two Palestinians who were sheltering in a Catholic church in Gaza. Calling the killings an act of terrorism, he said the attack by the Israel Defense Forces happened inside the Holy Family Parish complex, where there are no terrorists but families, children and people who are sick or disabled. The comments come as an IDF sniper shot and killed two Christian women inside the Holy Family Parish in Gaza, where Christian families have taken refuge since the start of the war. 
Over in Australia, flash floods in North Queensland have led to an entire town being evacuated and people trapped on a hospital roof. Thousands have been evacuated, but others remain stranded in what authorities expect to be the Australian region's worst ever flood. From the air, the scale of devastation can be seen in every direction. In the heart of the Cairns flood zone, there's heartbreak at Holloway's Beach. No, I've been in Holloway's about 20 years, never seen anything like it. Given plenty of warning about Cyclone Jasper, but residents say alerts for this rain emergency came too late. We are completely flooded. Record rain leading to knee-deep water inside homes. Scary because it happened so fast and the water was flowing so quickly, like really, really quickly. And it's like too late, you can't move the cars now. Uh, it was incredibly fast and that was shocking to me. Good Samaritans jumping in their own tinnies to save others. People on roofs who just taken dogs, cats. This group helping 70 people overnight. The rescue is continuing today. Boats the only way out of the swollen barren river for those stranded, including young children. I just want to get the kids and just get anywhere but here. Emotions running high as families left with just the clothes on their back, many clutching their beloved pets. So now we've lost everything, but that's all right, we'll get there. And this community isn't getting back through the closed road, even with a jet ski. I've been here since six o'clock this morning, saving cows, people, kids. I've just brought an esky full of hot cooked food to bring out to people. Now they won't let me out there with it. The wall of water too dangerous, even stopping the Australian Defence Force from getting through to evacuate the entire township of Woodjul Woodjul where nine people were stranded on a hospital roof overnight, seven others stuck on top of their homes. All persons there are safe and are on higher ground. The SES responding to more than a 1,000 call-outs in 24 hours. SES Rescue! Swiftwater Rescue crews attending 370 calls for help as every resource possible is thrown at getting people to safety. We're deploying resources to Townsville, ready to get into those communities just as soon as it is safe to do so. Submerged planes yesterday closing Cairns Airport, but the waters started to recede and flights are operating again. At this particular point in time, we now have a runway that is clear and dry. Clean water, a concern in Cairns, with supplies blocked by debris. Further north at Mossman, there's no power or water. We've got no water, so we're just putting buckets out in the rain. And as some businesses start the clean-up, all major roads in the far north are still cut off. It's quite scary. You know, we're going to run out of food supplies, run out of fuel, we're going to run out of a lot of things. The record rainfall derailing vital transport corridors, but this beast managed to venture into the main street at Ingham. Yeah, you always wanted to see a crocodile. The salty eventually captured and given a new home. While these locals aren't letting the catastrophe stop them from getting a cold one at their pub turned boat club. Moving on to other weather related news. 13 people were killed after a storm hit Argentina bringing devastating winds that dragged planes across an airport runway and had concert goers running for safety as a stage collapsed. A city home to 15 million people hit by the fury of Mother Nature. <laughs> At this concert, the stage collapsed. Giant inflatables were also hurtled into the crowd. At Azusa Airport outside Buenos Aires, the force of the wind moved planes. Ladders were pushed. <laughs> this person <laughs> tried to shelter under an aircraft. At the city's horse racing track, the Hippodrome, the usual sound of hooves replaced by wild rain and wind. At times it topped 150 kilometres an hour. The storm was also deadly. Further south in the port city of Bahia Blanca, at least 13 people were killed. Three days of mourning have been declared. Damage and power outages widespread. Falling trees meant some people were told to stay indoors today. At the worst hit area of Bahia Blanca, Argentina's president arrived <laughs> to applause. A crisis committee has been set up to help with the storm's recovery. Tonight's Road to the White House next.
Former President Donald Trump rallied his supporters in Nevada a day after he made controversial comments about immigrants at a rally in Durham, New Hampshire, USA. The comments drew rebukes from the Biden campaign and Trump's GOP rivals. Tonight, former President Donald Trump rallying his supporters in the early voting state of Nevada. It comes a day after he made these controversial comments about immigrants at a rally in Durham, New Hampshire. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. The Biden campaign accusing Trump of parroting Adolf Hitler, as similar wording was used in his writings. And at least one of Trump's GOP rivals blasted him for the remark. Trump is promising the largest deportation program in the nation's history if re-elected in 2024 and requiring immigrants pass a strong ideological screening. Trump also touted his relationship with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, calling him, quote, very nice, and referencing Russian President Vladimir Putin. But even Vladimir Putin, has anybody ever heard of Vladimir Putin? Of Russia says that Biden's, and this is a quote, politically motivated persecution of his political rival is very good for Russia because it shows the rottenness of the American political system. But this is Trump this weekend. Attracting the New England masses. We need a new birth of freedom. A stark contrast to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis as he struggles to gain traction in the state. Welcome back. Pro-democracy media tycoon Jimmy Lai faced a Hong Kong court today in a long-awaited trial over charges that he colluded with foreign forces. Jailed since December 2020, he faces life in prison if found guilty. A landmark national security trial for pro-democracy activist Jimmy Lai opened in Hong Kong on Monday amid tight security. The media tycoon faces life imprisonment on charges he colluded with foreign forces, including the United States. Lai, who has pleaded not guilty to all charges, was brought to the court in a navy blue prison van. Crowds lined up overnight to secure a spot in the courtroom. Among them was veteran Hong Kong Democrat Emily Lau. I hope they will get Jimmy and others will get a fair, open and just hearing. Lai, the founder of now shuttered pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily, is one of the most prominent Hong Kong critics of China's Communist Party leadership. He has faced a salvo of litigation since a wave of pro-democracy protests in 2019. China's foreign ministry recently called Lai a, quote, notorious anti-China element, and he has been behind bars now for over 1,000 days. Western democracies will be watching the case closely, with the trial seen as a key test for Hong Kong's judicial independence and freedoms under the security law imposed by China in 2020. Britain on Sunday explicitly called on Hong Kong authorities to release Lai. Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned that there will be problems with neighboring Finland after it joined NATO earlier this year. Finland's ascension into NATO marked a major shift in the security landscape in Northern Europe and added some 1,300 kilometers to the alliance's frontier with Russia. It was also a blow for President Putin, who has long warned against NATO expansion. In the interview with the state broadcaster Russia One, Putin said that the West dragged Finland into NATO and that all disputes, including territorial ones in the mid-20th century, have long been solved, saying that there were no problems there, now there will be. Putin added that Moscow has no interest, either in geopolitical, economic or military terms, to fight with NATO countries. Finland is also due to sign a defense cooperation agreement with the United States on Monday, which involves giving the U.S. military access to 15 Finnish military bases. A defiant North Korea has fired yet another ballistic missile this morning. This is the regime's second missile launch within just a 12-hour window. The launch has come as an apparent show of discontent over the nuclear consultative group meeting last week. A second missile launch by Pyongyang in the space of less than 12 hours. South Korean military officials have announced that North Korea fired what appears to be a long-range ballistic missile at 8.24 on Monday morning. The missile was launched at a high angle and flew about 1,000 kilometers before landing in the East Sea. The South Korean military said it's on high alert and has closely shared information with the U.S. and Japan. On Sunday night, Pyongyang fired a short-range ballistic missile into the East Sea. 
Commentators say North Korea's consecutive launches of a short-range and a long-range ballistic missile may be aimed at provoking South Korea and the U.S. The launches come as an apparent protest against a second nuclear consultative group or NCG meeting held in Washington, D.C., where South Korea and the U.S. agreed to conduct training on nuclear operations from next summer to deter Pyongyang's nuclear and missile threats. North Korea's defense ministry released a statement right after Sunday's launch and called the NCG meeting a, quote, blatant declaration of nuclear confrontation. Sunday also marked the 12th anniversary of the death of Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il. Experts said Sunday's launch could also be aimed at showing off Pyongyang's defense capabilities to strengthen internal solidarity on the anniversary. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department released a statement condemning Pyongyang's Sunday launch. The statement said the launch, just like any other ballistic missile launches this year, violates multiple U.N. Security Council resolutions and that North Korea is threatening regional stability. It also urged Pyongyang to engage in dialogue while adding that America's extended deterrence commitments to both South Korea and Japan are ironclad. The death of Kuwait's Emir Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah is being mourned by the countries in the Middle East and other parts of the world. Sheikh Nawaf, who died at 86, kept a low profile with his three year reign focused on trying to resolve the tiny, oil rich nation's internal political disputes. Kuwait's Emir Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmad Al Sabah died aged 86 according to the royal court, just over three years after assuming power in the US-allied Gulf oil producer. The cause of his death was not immediately disclosed. The Emir was admitted to hospital late last month due to what the state's news agency described at the time as an emergency health problem, but said that he was in a stable condition. Crown Prince Sheikh Meshal Al Ahmad Al Sabah, who has been Kuwait's de facto ruler since 2021, when the frail emir handed over most of his duties, was named as Sheikh Nawaf's successor. <laughs> Nawaf became emir in September 2020, following the death of his brother, Sheikh Sabah, who had ruled for more than a decade and shaped the state's foreign policy for over 50 years. Sheikh Nawaf was seen by diplomats as a consensus builder, even though his reign was marked by an intense standoff between the government and elected parliament, which had hindered key structural reforms in the oil-rich Gulf state. In recent months, consensus returned between the government and the parliament. Under Kuwait's constitution, the crown prince automatically becomes emir but assumes power only after taking an oath in parliament. The new emir has up to a year to name an heir. Welcome back. Attack at a holiday party in Mexico has left scores dead. For more on that story and much more, let's take you around the world. Mexican authorities said that a dozen people were killed in an attack at a holiday party in the central Mexican state of Guanajuato. Shelters in Port Sudan City of Eastern Sudan have been struggling to accommodate large amounts of refugees amid severe shortage of supplies as the violent clashes in the country entered the ninth month. Iraq is voted today in the first provincial council elections in a decade with the ruling Shiite Muslim Alliance likely to extend its grip on power amid a boycott by populist cleric Mokhada al sadr its main political rival. The Chinese Foreign Ministry said that the Russia Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin will hold talks with Chinese Premier Li Chang during a visit planned from December 19th to December 20th. South Korean residents expressed worry today after temperatures in Seoul dropped in an unexpected swing. And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other there in English. Tonight, we are leaving you in South Korea as a lighting ceremony is brightening up the winter nights in downtown Seoul. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.